Hello, everyone, and welcome to What's Up, the podcast where we talk about everything electrical and the future of the test and measurement industry. My name is Darcy, and I'm here to dive deep in some of the industry's biggest topics. In today's episode, I'm talking to Nicholas Vetterstrand all about circuit breakers. We discuss some of the technical challenges of testing and why they're so crucial to maintain. So let's find out what's up with Nicholas Vetterstrand. Hello, Nicholas. How are you doing today? Welcome to the What's Up podcast. Thank you. I'm doing great. How are you? I'm fabulous. Thank you. And as you well know, we always start this podcast with something we call the power up questions. It's just three small quick fire questions to get your brain thinking and so we can get to know you a little bit better. So the big question, are you ready for them? <laughs> yeah, it's good to wake me up. So okay. let's start. Okay, great. Question number one, what is your favorite forum or exhibition to go to? Uh, the favorite forum is Seagray, uh, by, by <laughs> but that's the key one and, and number one at all time. It's all the key people in the industry are there and it's just a great place to be. Question number two, what is your favorite thing about Mega? My favorite thing about Mega is that we contributing to a better world with the uh, net zero goals and uh, changing from fossil to electricity. Where are you part of it? And that's just amazing. And question number three, how many coffees do you drink in a day? That could be anything from zero, which is happening quite often. You actually. don't drink coffee. Yeah, but but that it's not that I try to avoid it. But mm -hmm. sometimes or, or I would say many times it could be like two, three, but not more than that. Mm hmm. Great. So now let's get into the meat of it, because today we are talking about circuit breakers. Yeah, not coffee. Yeah, not coffee. As much as we love it, we're here to talk about circuit breakers. So tell me, why are they so important that we're dedicating an entire episode to them? Yeah, first of all, we, we talk about uh, uh, the protection part of, of the network. And uh, circuit breaker is, of course, the, the main part or one of the main parts. It's a circuit. So mm -hmm. that's why we in Mega call the protection is the relay protection, where you normally say when it's a protection, everybody reacts and say, yeah, it's relay. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's also other parts. So much more to it than just <laughs> much that. Much more to it. And we, we say that also circuit breaker, instrument transformer is in that circuit, obviously. But then we also have testers for primary injection, which we also include in, in protection. But today we, we will talk about circuit breaker. Uh, and it is a critical part because it's the, the, the power source or the power that needs to b have the ability to break the high energy in case of a fault current mm -hmm. to uh, save the network and humans as well. So that's a key thing. And not the least, we have done a new circuit breaker analyzer, Eagle 200. So it's a good opportunity to talk about both. Okay, so we have a new circuit breaker analyzer on the horizon. That's very, that's very intriguing. Can you tell me a bit more about that? Uh, sure. It's a new generation of circuit breaker analyzer. It's built uh, of the experience or based on the experience we have had. We started with circuit breaker analyzers mid 80s. So it's been a while and it's a couple of generations ago. Uh, but we, we have focused now on today's challenges, which are a little bit different than what it was uh, a couple of decades ago. Uh, and, and I think key, uh, key difference from earlier uh, developments is that we focus from the whole process, on the whole process, from the storage through the test and the report and back to the storage again. So you've been involved in kind of the conception and delivery of this new circuit breaker analyzer. So can you tell me a little bit about why it's come to fruition and like how has the landscape actually changed? There are two parts of it, you can say. Well, one is that the fleet and the customer demands have changed. So the circuit breakers, you can, if we start with the circuit breaker part, the reliability is getting better and better. Uh, Sigre doing reports. I've done surveys in the industry and they started in the 70s. And at that time, it was 1.67 faults, major faults per 100 circuit breaker years. And that has, in the latest survey, gone down to uh, 0 0.3 major faults per 100 circuit breaker years. And, and of course, that is affecting how much we focus at the mm. asset. If, if the fault rate goes down, then it's less concern even though you need to test it however the funny thing is that the the distribution where the fault is has been equal the same from from the start to the beginning it's the operating mechanism that stands for the 70 percent of, of the faults 
insulation 10% and interrupter 9% and then we have other categories as well but so it's definitely the me operating mechanism that's the majority of the faults so you were talking there about i suppose the fleet changes but then when it comes to the customer demands like can you just delve into that a bit more yeah uh, the change there is that we have a much higher time and cost pressure nowadays uh, I, I would say uh, and the network service demands that it should be up all the time. So you cannot take uh, assets out of service to make a maintenance as easy as, as before. So you can generalize a bit and say that you have two custom, customer categories. First, you have what was more common in the past, that you were well prepared, you know your asset, you have uh, the ability to do advanced measurements and mm -hmm. spend a lot of time on doing that. Uh, and, and we have a good product which covers that, the, the TM series. Uh, but the second part, which is growing uh, due to the changes, uh, is that you go do more standard tests, just quick tests to check that the breaker is okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't want to do any preparation. You just want to come there and, and do your tests. Uh, and I think it's changed there is that it's a lot of contractors doing this now. And, and maybe you own a contract for three or four years and the circuit breaker is tested every seventh year so it may not be even be a test during yeah, the period they may not you even are see it. exactly so so i think there's a that change is is significant that we have to uh, we have to, we have to uh, take for given that the, the 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 operator who comes there he doesn't know Mm -hmm. the, the object and and just want quickly to make the standard test to check that it's all right so then when it comes to detecting problems within the circuit breaker themselves like how would one go about that you can do several measurements but since we have uh, uh, the operating mechanism is, is most of the faults uh, the, they are main focus on that part but main contact timing is a standard measurement and there uh, you will detect problems in, in the operating mechanism. Uh, you can look, do coil current analysis, and it's important to do that together with the station voltage because coil and uh, current and voltage, they relate to each other to get the power, so you do both at the same time. And then I would say travel to see the motion of the, the contacts. That's also another thing you can do. Uh, then when it comes to conductivity, how good the breaker leads the current so even though it's circuit breaker break the current but actually in the the normal state it is to to lead the current mm -hmm. so you, you have need to have a low resistance to so the conductivity is good and minimize the losses then you have a part for insulation as well to to keep the um, losses to to earth and so on and keep personnel safe in, in the environment so there you do insulation resistance test or power factor dissipation fa factor tests then you can do special tests as well. DRM is one popular where you, you do dynamic resistance to check the arcing contact in the SF6 mm -hmm. breakers. If you have a vacuum breaker, you want to check the vacuum integrity. So when the breaker is open, that it doesn't lead any current or you can't have any flashover. Uh, or vibration is another thing you, you can do just to get a signature of how the breaker sounds like <laughs> uh, with the sensor. Just to compare it with earlier tests if something has changed. Mm -hmm. So you've spoken then a lot about the testing that actually you can do to detect issues, but how are those tests then performed? First of all, you isolate the test object, so, okay. so you, you uh, have access to it. There are some online techniques as well, but I guess that could be a, an episode in itself. <laughs> so we, we, we keep that for, for now. Mm -hmm. Uh, but then when you have the isolated co object, you, you make all connections to it. And it's a lot of connections. So in, in circuit break testing, I would say that most of the time is spent to make connections. There are customers asking us, can't we do anything about that? No, we can do better things, but we, we cannot help that you need to access certain points to, to get it. So you can spend like 45 minutes up to a couple of hours connecting mm. and then the test goes very quick. very quickly yeah so that's a bit annoying but that's mm. that's life uh, then you do the setup in the uh, software or in the product itself uh, then the test itself like i said it's super quick it takes a few to make the actual measurement takes less than a second because mm. it's only a few hundred milliseconds but uh, then you do a series of tests so you have to repeat and, and so on so it, so it takes a couple of minutes maybe mm -hmm. maybe five ten minutes but 
longer than that it's not so then you you want after each test you want to have a first view did the test work out or is, is it acceptable not from a detailed analysis but just get the feedback mm. do, do i need the to redo reading yeah uh and uh, hopefully you don't have to redo anything. Mm -hmm. Then you can keep the result and and uh, go when you're ready with all tests. You can do more uh, thorough uh, analyze and uh, report. Mm -hmm. That's how it goes. So Nicholas, I want to talk about the Eagle Two Hundred. So can you just explain to me like how is that different from maybe some of the earlier generations that are already on the market? Yeah, I would say the the main thing is that we have made the tests a lot faster, and not only the test, but everything to make it smooth as possible to walk through the test without compromising the measurement quality and and the accuracy. And we so would on. never do that. <laughs> no, that's not us. Uh, so going through a standard test now we talk about. So so the ta standard test that's more common for the the contractors to do nowadays. Mm -hmm. To go the, seamlessly through that as fast as possible, that's what we have focused at. Uh, another thing I would say is the, the user interface. Is a, now it's a touch screen uh, and a nice user interface and a mm -hmm. good experience with good guidance through with connection diagrams, color coding, what, where to connect and so on. Mm -hmm. But if you take the the project itself when we developed it we took a look at the whole process so any way from the storage to back to storage as i said so storage is one thing that you make sure that you have everything you need to test that you know it's there and when you pick your bags and going out to test you know you have the stuff uh, so you don't have to go back and get in some cases you have to abandon or you mm -hmm. cannot do the test uh, transportation, it's now made in the transport case directly, so you don't need a, an outer shell uh, of the product, so to speak. So you can ship it as it is, which is convenient. Unpacking and preparation, you have very good bags where, where the cables are structured, easy overview, which cables I need for this test, and <clears throat> and, uh, and uh, yeah, the preparation gets easier with that, with that you have a good overview and good guidance in the in the screen. Uh, the tests itself are, as before, quite seamless, uh, but but anyhow, they, they are there. <clears throat> First review on screen, since we have the the, uh, the f touch screen, it's mm -hmm. easy to see the first test. And then the last thing I, I would say is the one-click report. So we spend mm -hmm. a lot of time to, to make the reporting as easy as possible. So now it's actually possible with one click to get either a direct printout or save it as a PDF on a, on a USB stick. So that sounds like a lot of features um, and they all sound great, but what are the benefits the customers are actually going to see with this? Yeah, the overall experience is is uh, is different with okay. this one. But it's the whole package, uh, yeah, really. Yeah, exactly. But if you go into the key thing, which I talked a lot about, is the time saving. So saving time through test preparation and reporting are probably two key things where we are gaining a lot of time by avoiding a lot of preparation and uh, aftermath reporting. Mm -hmm. That's the feedback we get from customers. I, I don't want to spend the hotel evenings when I get back from my day of work to to spend the night time on, on reports yeah, before I go to bed. So, and... so an easy report has been very uh, important. Last thing, maybe a cliche, but ease of use. There is no training need because it's very intuitive and, and simple mm -hmm. to use. So hardly read any manual and, mm -hmm. and and every instruction is on board. So mm -hmm. it's very, very com mm -hmm. convenient to use. That sounds like a great solution kind of for the here and now, but I want to pivot a little bit and just talk about Circuit Breaker segment as a whole. So what do you think is coming next? Well, uh, from us, I mean, we'll not give that too easy for oh, you. You're not going to give us any insider <laughs> nah, secrets. Not, not too long, far away at least. <laughs> but as a uh, whole, like an industry, like, whole, where do you think uh, it's going? For, for the product, if you start with that, we, we have a few features that's given. It's for was mega that were the first ones or, or among the first ones that did them. So dual ground, first trip, DRM, that's mm. given that we do. And do PC software, so on, on the way. But... Uh, there are more things on the way, but but I, I just want to keep you on hold there for the industry <laughs> and, and keep that with me. But we, we have m many interesting things going on and, and uh, 
uh, when it's time, I will tell you. You're not giving anything away, are you? <laughs> <laughs> not as easy. You can see the future up here of the Circuit Breaker segment. You're not letting us in. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's, it. that's it. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Nicholas. I really loved having you on. I hope you enjoyed it. Yes, enjoyed it a lot. Thank you, Darcy. Perfect. Thank you very much, Nicholas. Thank you for watching and thank you for listening.